Now, earlier this evening, the death was announced of Mark E. Smith, founder, frontman and sometimes fearsome capo of the British post-punk rockers The Fall. He was 60. Mark E. Smith was one of many stars to be who attended a near-mythical Sex Pistols gig in Manchester in 1976 and decided a career in music was for him. Through four decades and more than 30 albums, Smith was the one constant in The Fall, part in company with more than 50 band members and entourage, including a number of his own wives. Many fellow musicians have been offering tributes to Smith this evening, though it's doubtful if any of them will quite compare to his own farewell to his champion, the late DJ John Peel. That made for one of the truly memorable Newsnight moments, as Stephen Smith reports. I came top in England for like two years on the run and they never thought it was me. All the other Smiths used to get congratulated at me. I like that. It's good being a Smith sometimes. You get away with murder, you know. Even by the standards of punk from which the fall emerged, Marky e. Smith was an unlikely frontman. Just trying to tune. They tuning up. Just really, really, really fucking play, isn't it? Couldn't play an instrument, couldn't dance, and with a vocal style once described as a unique one-note delivery, somewhere between amphetamine-spiked rant and alcohol-addled yarn. But he outlasted almost all of his contemporaries, becoming a unique and influential figure in British music and culture. He was the one constant of the Falls lineup. By one estimate, the band got through 66 members in its four decades or so. Smith said he was the only man apart from Prince who could recruit talent off the street. As for his songwriting, one critic called it a kind of Northern English magic realism that mixed industrial grime with the unearthly and uncanny. The fall were championed by the Radio 1 DJ John Peel, so it was inevitable that Newsnight turned to Smith when Peel died in 2004. Mark, he seemed to become obsessed with the fall. Well, he, I suppose he became obsessed with lots of people from various points. He just played endlessly and endlessly. It must have been an incredible compliment. What, for the fall? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 me, me and John had an agreement, you know, we, we never were friends or anything like that, you know. We, it, this is what I admired about him. He was always objective. People forget that. What did you just? I'm interested to know what you thought of his program, Mark. When you when you listened to it, presumably you did listen to it a lot. I mean, what did you actually think of him as a broadcaster? Well, I, I listened to it in like the early seventies when I was a teenager, and that, uh, and I heard a lot of uh, uh, Jamaican stuff and German stuff through through him. You know, but uh, you know, uh, we were always like uh, at arm's distance. He seemed to find something for every generation, including the fall. Okay, am I allowed to speak now? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, whatever, whatever you say. <laughs> what, are you the new one? <laughs> are you the new DJ? Yeah, probably, probably. How dare you assume I want to follow good with you? I hear you tough old thing, listen to hell. Truth be told, an interview with Mark E. Smith was sometimes even more enjoyable than a new album. In one of his last interviews, Smith said, People still cross the road from me. I've still got that. I can clear a pub when I want to. It's a talent. <laughs> 